Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Russian campaign. Last time around we had a naval battle. Didn't go too well. I didn't actually notice that it was my admiral that got shot. I think when I looked back at it, I think I uh, thought that the enemy admiral died. I guess I wasn't paying attention enough. And uh, now I can kind of see why uh, my fleet gave up, because the admiral died. Um, anyway, since then, I've gone ahead and released the first video, and what someone said was, there's actually some really nice positions here, or at least this one, we've got cotton from Savannah, and then there's possibly this one, which is cotton from St. Augustine, and cotton is definitely a lot better than uh, furs. It's about, what, 14 uh, coins better, if I'm doing the math right. Um, so, instead... I, the thing is, I'm just about to get my navy here, to start doing the first. The reason why I'm moving out the navy, like, if you remember last time, there's another thing that I uh, figured out is that we were preparing to uh, attack the Ottoman Empire. However, I noticed something when I was about to declare war on them. Is that I went in here, and then I went, wait a minute, where exactly do I declare war at them? Against them? Huh, because normally if we go over to Austria, it should be there under present uh, state gift. If we go back here, there's nothing. There's just join wars. And the reason for that is because I've loaded in the wrong campaign, or at least the wrong campaign for going to war against the Ottomans. I should have loaded in the Ottoman campaign, which opens up war in between Russia and the Ottomans. The reason why they've done this for the main campaign is that often Russia would be so distracted by fighting the Ottomans that they wouldn't aid against Napoleon and Napoleon I guess would steamroll the entire thing. So with that, that I cannot actually declare war on the Ottoman Empire means that I am now rushing all my armies towards Napoleon. So we've got uh, Benningsen moving in and uh, Peter Bagration, which I put in charge of the army that was supposedly or was going to march down and take the uh, Moldova region. We're also marching these guys away from Odessa. Um, the thing though is, uh, kind of a boon with losing the navy is that the navy cost a lot. Those ships were expensive to run and now I'm making actually quite a bit of money. But uh, unfortunately for us, Kutuzov finds himself in kind of a pickle here. It seems that the French sort of outsmarted us here. So we moved to Milan to kind of bypass Napoleon's main thrust and go up and take Switzerland so that I could get the objective, get a lot of coin, upgrade my state, which is quite run down. But as you can see, there's quite a few of Napoleon's generals close by. I'm not entirely sure who's uh, here. Um, doesn't say what general. But we've got John andre Messina over here, and we've got uh, Edouard Mortier coming in over here. This is probably the weaker of the two armies, but this one seems rather strong. We've got um, Graziers, pretty big unit. These ones, not to worry about, but a lot of French Grenadiers, and uh, pretty good units. And also, I'm pretty sure there's a other French army moving down through here. So if I would be going north, I would be ambushed. And as we remembered from um, early episodes, the Swiss have a lot of troops. They have at least two full stacks. 
and troops moving around all over the place. So we're kind of in a pickle here. So hopefully we can get Bennington down here. Since my plan to uh, in get a lot of money from invading the Ottomans uh, didn't pan out, um, we'll have to look at something else. And I'm wondering if I would go ahead and declare war on Italian states and steal them. Um, as the Mediterranean is not safe for any naval work, really, um, I would like to attack the Spanish. That would be a nice turn of events. I know that the British have been ferrying troops down here. We've got an army uh, being carried by Horatio Nelson. I'm not entirely sure where they're going. Possibly recapturing Gibraltar. But they could land at other places, like the fact that they've taken... Uh, Palma and the uh, Balearic Islands. So the British are doing work in the Mediterranean, but it, I guess what I could do is go up here uh, to start. We'll still try and keep this as our goal, but then to kind of bypass the main thrust of Napoleon, we could go through here and kind of cut at his underbelly by taking out Spain and then pushing up through there and kind of avoiding but at the same time I'd probably have to keep some troops just to aid the um, Austrians otherwise they'll probably collapse and uh, the areas we need to take actually include Switzerland but then we've got uh, the main kind of Paris region but also this region down below. So that would be the uh, Bordeaux, Aquitaine region for some reason that I need. I don't know why they've made it like that. Um, also prestige wise I noticed that I'm even... No, I'm j even though the, the, the pillar of the Spanish looks higher than mine, I actually uh, outranked them by three points. For some reason Prussia is number one. Uh, followed by Britain and then France, which I'm not sure about. Prussia hasn't made a move as of yet, have they? They are... Uh, they have joined us, but they are currently not at war with France. They're actually trading with France. That would be great if we could push them in on the war against France. They could take out here and cause a bit of diversion. Anyways, I'm not entirely sure what battle we'll get today. It could be that the French attack in a two-pronged attack from the north and from the east here and try to take Milan. Otherwise, I'll try to reinforce the regions as much as possible and we might push then uh, north to Switzerland and uh, push west to the Piedmont Liguria region over there. With that said though, I have no more moves to make during this turn, so let's go ahead and end turn and see what our enemies come up with. It looks the Massena has moved on Milan and put it under siege. Uh, he seems to be the only French general there though, and um, I would say that we should break the siege. I could. Poss oh, infiltration, that's not gonna work, is it? We'll keep the spy where he is, or maybe I should try actually to find the army that's up in the woods there, put him there. At the same time, we are moving our generals to support. Fortunately, Bennington is at least three turns away, so he won't be able to help. Nice to see the Austrians are moving in a strong, making a strong move against Bavaria. We keep moving these armies towards join in here, but it looks like we're going to be fighting here, so we're going to break the siege immediately. Um, with bring all our troops here and attack the French. So, we deploy 3,786 men against their 3,677. Um, the main point here would see... I would possibly see that the French have an advantage in 
Infantry, possibly, I would say. We... or cannons, actually. I have a 12-pounder and 6-pounder horse artillery against their two 8-pounders. Um, cavalry, I would say I had a, the advantage. I have two heavy cavalry units against their one, and then I've backed up by Hussar and Lancer compared to uh, their Chasseur Cheval and then two just um, Esquadron, which is quite small units, even though it is the first guard unit. Uh, but they're small units, so it should be. Well, you know what, when I say I have infantry advantage, I notice these are cons three units of conscript, even though they have, but then they have three units of grenadiers, but at the same time, you know, I have guard grenadiers, and uh, troops like that, so I'd say we, ha we have a pretty good chance here, I'd say. With that, let's break the siege and smash the French once more. And here is our battlefield. It is a pretty flat one, with just like slight high ground going through here, and we have kind of a low ground around this forest. Um, interesting hill here in the center. Would have been nice if it were bigger, so I can actually place cannons on it, but we can't, so never mind. I split my army, because this, of course, splits me in two. We've got the light infantry, which is going to take up position in the forest. They're going to be followed by two units of musketeers. So the Moscow musketeers, and... No, this is the Moscow musketeers. And then the veteran musketeers. It's going to move up. And on this side as well, we have split, so we've got one unit of heavy cavalry and the... Um, uh, guard Cossacks moving on the left. Similarly here we have a heavy cavalry unit and the Guard Hussars moving on this side. And then for the main center attack we've got two units of infantry, musketry, uh, or I should say one unit of musketry and the 11th Grenadiers, I believe these are. Um, they're going to be moving up and we've got here just to kind of soak up shots local partisans and as a backup we've got the main kind of um, we got a unit of Russian grenadiers and then another grenadier unit and the guard grenadiers uh, 12 pounder in the center with the horse artillery up there on the side let's go ahead and start they dug in a little bit so they uh, we're able to dig in a little bit here before the siege. Yes. A problem that I probably should have foreseen. Their artillery is concentrating on this bit. I'm gonna get the ca uh, my cavalry out of there before they take too much, too many losses. Um, let's see where are the French going? It's quite a mass of troops back here, but. We have two units, Grenadiers and Voltageers, Militia, and then another clump of infantry up there. Are you firing? Yeah, we're, we're, our artillery is concentrating on their uh, eight pounders over there. We have a lot more cannons in our units. Seemingly this one's on its own. Cossacks going to be ordered to advance while the heavy cavalry will be kept in reserve. The enemy seems to be lining up towards an attack over here. We should disrupt that by starting the move of the light infantry. Also, I should say, Buxhoven is on this side. Um, and Kutusov is uh, placed with the center. We're going to start advancing on the French. And as we advance here, we'll make sure to halt the fire of the artillery as my grenadiers pass over. We've got our cavalry moving on the flanks. And there we can hold that fire. Quite a lot of French troops over here. 
And now they seem to be moving all my troops in the forest instead. We'll set up the um, heavy cavalry over here. We're kind of safe of artillery here, so it should be fine to uh, deploy. Okay, they're moving quite a lot of troops here. Actually. We'll hold about there with these infantry units in reserve that will hold their fire and then the general is situated in the back supporting morally supporting the main uh, force there the French aren't shooting and I won't actually shoot back at them just yet I want to uh, see if I can pin most of the French units from the front first. We're gonna deploy actually all of these into a single line now. Okay, they're moving. Which should give me plenty of room to move forward here. For the light infantry. Followed by the regular infantry, followed by my general. And at this point, I think I've moved far forward enough into the forest that we will fire at will. Thing is, uh, and now they only have one unit there. This is what could be a little bit worrisome when they get activated. Oh no, they are, there are multiple units there. They've turned one. It's just a militia unit though. Not all of my units are firing though. This one, the 17th, the light infantry is not firing. It's unnecessary to move these guys into action just yet. Let's have the militia move to that side. Oh, the Cossacks have been sitting there without any task. You know what? I think we can fire overhead. Let's go ahead and fire. Okay, we. this group has wo woken up. We'll halt and open fire there, and then this group should march to about there. French are moving forward. Maybe I should deploy the Moscow Grenadiers, or Moscow Infantry up to there. Let's have the heavy, heavy Infantry move forward. Oh, there, uh, that's quite, oh shit, that's quite a charge going in. Right. Cavalry needs to come in. And for that to hold, I need Kutuzov up there. Cannon will hold fire as I don't want him to accidentally shoot Kutuzov. There's a big mess going on here. However, my heavy units, my elite units holding the center, should be able to beat back the French firing into the cavalry, even though we're taking quite heavy losses. of is moving in. The um, cavalry there is being uh, forced back. Let's go ahead and strike on the sides. Most of the French were actually broken just by the Grenadiers and our guard unit. However, this guard is very unhappy with his position right now. And they have sent in Grenadiers towards the pot sand units. Cavalry is coming in from over there. My cavalry, my Cossacks coming in from over here. I need to strike towards the center. And you guys need to advance. Continue on the advance. Why don't you want to? There we go. It's a complete mess. One of the center units have been broken while this grenade unit for some reason wants to turn. They're actually breaking my center. This unit's not doing too hot. We'll realign this one. Given that we're kind of beating them over there, I'm gonna realign some troops. For now, the Pavlovsky Guard French have broken the center. Katusov is kind of a pickle there. It's 
lot of enemy cavalry. Oh, the guard Cossacks broke. Our men are running for what more units are run? I'd stick on the scripts. Katusov and the guards are caught in quite the fight there in the center. Oh, I haven't told you to open fire, have I? March quickly. Swing with the light infantry. Katusov is fleeing the battlefield right now. But the square holds. The square holds. Heavy cavalry, move in. And my heavy cavalry has now made it to the center and is now ready to relieve. This did not go that well at all, I'd say. Even though we're winning, oh, Katusov is back. And he's riding straight towards that square again. Making sure that it holds. And it looks like the French are being beaten back. My heavy cavalry is attacking them. The uh, Cossacks are back. And a lot of other units are actually back as well. The partisans are coming Glorious back in order. Is soon to be yours. I imagine that uh, my heavy cavalry is quite tired at this point. Let's take stock of the situation here. The French attacked very aggressively against us. Let's take stock of the situation and figure out what's going on. So, um... Currently, we are definitely winning. I'll order a general advance out of the forest with Buxhoven. I guess we were too slow to respond with Buxhoven, and we actually had more troops than necessary over there. And uh, I do think the right choice was not to form square in the center, even though it was because it was such a mixed attack of cavalry and infantry. So the mistake that I made there was not to support it fast enough with the troops out of uh, the forest, Buxhoven, which had still um, a lot of infantry. And especially the he had two reserves which, which he could have moved to the aid of the center. What I po what I probably should have done is instead of putting uh, the local partisans to kind of link here, link the armies together, I should have put them as a reserve in the forest instead. Currently, we're just finding small pockets of French resistance. We've got Voltigeer over there, and Line Infantry, and we've got the General right over there. Sitting in the forest, watching over his army crumble for us. However, they did inflict quite a bit of damage on us. That Voltigeer unit is actually able to fire at further distance than us. Go ahead and see quite a bit of losses on these two. And quite a bit of losses on these this one at least. The hazards. Really the only infantry units that's standing is the Voltageer. And it's about to get shot down and run over by my hussars. While we order the advance of the rest of the army towards the French camp.
the run over only the French general remains. Question is if he wants to retreat or I'm gonna be forced to shoot him like we've done previously with French generals. I'm ordering my cannon to open fire. Hopefully he'll retreat. I'm not really in the mood killing uh, generals. But if he decides to stay, he decides to stay. We can open fire at long range. And maybe that'll be enough to send him off. Although he's uh, quite deep in that forest. And as you can see, the shots scatter everywhere. We haven't gotten anyone. I guess we can send in the cavalry. Yeah, we, we haven't managed to shoot a single guy out of that unit. Even with uh, most of the army right now firing on him. And he doesn't seem to be faced by it either. But now they've lost one bodyguard. Should really be overwhelmed by the amount of troops around here. Oh, he bypassed so he can be uh, locked in from all sides. Now he's starting to lose morale. I'm taking such a consideration not to try and kill French generals. I wonder if it's supposed to be the guy in the white uniform there. I guess it's the one with the actual hat. Hold your fire. He's leaving the field. And there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen. We won. We broke through. At the Battle of uh, Milan. The second Battle of Milan. Unfortunately, we took quite heavy losses. So, out of our army of 3,800 men, we lost about 1,200. I actually thought we would have lost more. Um, all units are intact, but some units, of course, suffered heavy losses. Compared, though, our losses with the French losses. They re uh, deployed similar numbers, about 100 men less. They lost, comparatively, 2,000 men more than us at 3,200 with only 475 of them remaining compared to us uh, which have 2,500 men remaining. And we can note here that we lost 1,200 men but the enemy killed about a thousand so about 150 w kills were inflicted on our own men in the confusion there. Um, compared with the French, though, they seem to have lost about 700 men that weren't actually inflicted by us, which, that's a lot. If we go through here, um, the uh, uh, Pavlovsky Leibgewardi is the one that has killed the most, 583 and as we saw, as units on both sides of the Grenadiers actually broke, they held, even formed square to protect Kutuzov, and made it so that he could leave uh, from safety there. And they held until the very end. They lost about half of the unit they started with, but 583 kills. Follow that, we've got the, I believe these are the um, Lancers, the uh, Cossacks, and then Russian Grenadiers, uh, wait, Leibgewardi, Pavlovsky, here's another Pavlovsky Polk, 
Which one is which? I'm pretty sure this one is the one that formed square. Because it was smaller in size than this Leibgewardi Pavlovsky Polk. Which were started 244. This one started 157. I think that's how it works. We can see anyways, because this one has three post-battle chevrons, while this one has four. Pretty good all overall, though. Uh, even Katuso managed to get some kills. He managed to his bodyguard managed to kill seven enemies. The artillery did poorly, but I didn't have good positions for them, anyways. Um, right, very good. French were beaten back. And no, it was this one only has three. And this one has four. Wait, which? No, it cannot be that one, can it? Grenadier? This one's not Pavlovsky. Why did it say Pavlovsky? Now I'm confused. This one has 91 left, which I believe is the one that. This is the one that killed so many. Rather than the other one. Would have been nicer if it was this one. I'm not. Yeah. Um. There we have that. We beat them back, but there's plenty more armies to go. I wonder. The resupply rate here is pretty poor, and the countryside is being burned by French armies. I wonder if I should just. Thing is, I need to find whatever army is here. And if I push now, I kind of want to push over here and take this, but I'm pretty sure the AI usually hides troops here. So I don't want to go from losing this many men in my battle and then be ambushed as I moved over, move over here. Um, we've got plenty of troops coming in, so there's no... Like, there's no danger right now. We've got plenty of reinforcements coming in. So I can wait for them before I make my move. But with that said, we're going to end it right here for today's episode. So, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.